Every time a new AI model comes out, I try to code with it. Sure, I do the fun little one shots or three shots, however many shots it takes, but then I use it in a way that you actually do as a software engineer, and that is in Windsurf or in Cursor, or whatever you use, something that is integrated into your development environment. Hmm. Somebody should really coin that term, integrated development environment. It has a ring to it. <laughs> So I figured I'd do all of that with the five most popular AI models for coding today. That means going over everything I've experienced coding with these in real code bases, refactoring some simple code in the browser interfaces, and seeing if it can one-shot a P5JS game. We'll discover their strengths, we'll discover their weaknesses, as well as which one is better for which tasks. And what you will be seeing is the quintessential vibe coding, because even though I do like tab, 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 that does not use the model you choose over here. Use some windsurf built-in thing. So in order to get the actual test of the models, we'll need to be prompting over here and seeing how it integrates into the code base. Starting things off with Claude 3.5 Sonnet, honestly, like this is my first foray into AI Genta coding and it was awesome. It is incredibly precise. It, it executes exactly what I ask it to with minimal wandering, almost no wandering in my experience, but it also gets full context of everything that it needs as well. So you ask it to do one thing in a particular code file and then it'll see, oh, well, this is pulling in that file over here and that file over there. So let me analyze everything that is called with within this file so I have full context and then I can write the best code possible. And it also keeps very good context. I don't have to reiterate something that I had mentioned five messages prior like with some of these other models because it would remember. And while it is kind of slow, but I'd rather have it work slower and less debugging on my end than work faster and then I spend a whole crap ton of time debugging that code. And even though this is an older model, it is still one of the best. If you want something that is very precise and ideal for tasks that need careful, accurate execution, this is your model. And I do want to be very clear about something. This video is not sponsored by Windsurf or any of these AI models. It's sponsored by Micro Center, which as you may know, they carry basically every monitor you could imagine. Keyboards, mice, pre-built computers, computer components so you can build your own, cables, switches, anything you could imagine. And if you've ever wanted an Apple product, Now's probably the time to do it because anything from Mac Studio to Mac Mini to MacBook Air to MacBook Pro, all of it is on sale right now at Ma Micro Center. And I do want to show you that these are their recent products. These aren't old products you're trying to get off the shelf. This is early 2025, late 2024 with the new Apple M4 chip. And if you're one of the lucky ones who has a Micro Center near you, definitely go in store. There are a lot of very helpful individuals there. When I was there earlier getting my uh, Minis form, any PC to set up Nix OS. I was trying to figure out how do I want to set it up with my other PC for content, that for coding, and then my KVM switch. I didn't really know how to go about the KVM switch stuff, and they were a huge help. But if there isn't one near you, click the links in the description below and you'll be able to see all the sales, search for everything you want, and if you live in Santa Clara, California, there's actually a Micro Center store coming to you soon, so make sure you check it out. All right, back to the video. However, it does tend to play it a bit safe, where it may analyze all of the files related to this file. It won't refactor those files where it sees something has gone wrong or could be improved, which is a good thing because it stays on task, but it's bad because it doesn't improve where there could be improvements, like Claude 3.7 Sonnet, which is... <laughs> I would say overly ambitious. It reads more than what it needs for that specific file, it feels like. And then every single file it reads, it's like, oh, this could be refactored a little bit, or this function can be deleted, or this over here and this over there. And it just sticks its arm into everything to the point where you have five, six diffs that you have to review before you can accept the code when you only asked for one. So it is like 3.5 with a, with a bit more horsepower, if you will, but it's not as focused. That ambition often leads to overreaching to where maybe it will delete a function over here but forgets that it's supposed to replace it with something else or you're looking at it like why did it delete that function i need that function for this file over here that's not a good thing and then when it comes to the extended thinking mode i don't like it it hallucinates too much it takes too long it's too expensive it tries to be excessively complex so thinking it's not really an option for me whereas 3.7 itself 
I wouldn't really recommend it to anybody because it feels like just a worse version of the new Gemini 2.5 Pro. Gemini 2.5 Pro feels like all the best parts of 3.5 and all the best parts of 3.7 combined. So it's just as, if not more accurate than 3.5. And it has amazing breadth like 3.7, but it doesn't touch as much unrelated code. So like I talked about, 3.5 will analyze all of these files, but only write code for where you wanted it to write code. And maybe wander a little bit. 2.5 Pro, unless you explicitly tell it otherwise, will actually recommend revisions uh -huh. for this, work. whether it's refactoring and things of that nature. And it has such a large context window that it doesn't delete a function over here and forget about it when it was really supposed to replace it like 3.7. It remembers everything that you asked it to do and everything that it had seen thanks to that large context window. And I found that the mistakes that it makes are much more minor than what you will see in a lot of other models as well. So sure, sometimes you don't want the AI model to touch code that you didn't tell it to touch, but if there is one that does it and does it right, it's Gemini 2.5 Pro. So if you have a large code base, you have a lot that needs to get done, you have a huge refactor in mind, something a bit more complex or high stakes, this is the model I would recommend. Oh, and real quick, Gemini 2.5 Pro is my go-to right now, even over 3.5 Sonnet, because even though it is, again, a little bit broader, the code quality for all of it appears to be better for me. And then we have the model that feels like the opposite of 3.7 Sonnet, and that is O3 Mini, medium reasoning in windsurf. Because where 3.7 Sonnet likes to reach everywhere and touch every piece of code, O3 Mini does not like that at all. It barely even writes all of the code that you ask it to. It's like it writes most of it, and then you have to do a manual iteration. Oh, you need to add this. Okay, let's add just that one line right there. Oh, and then you need to add this. Oh, let's add one, just another line or two there until you get some code that is precise and typically accurate, but over many manual iterations and without context of the larger code base because it doesn't really analyze too much of the code base around it at all. So if you want more control, more precision, if you will, in exactly what is happening over something like 3.5, then O3 Mini may be your best bet. But at that point, I would just be inside the code file and just use tab, tab, tab. That's what it feels like. Just a less convenient version of tab, tab, tab because you have to prompt. And I don't know if y'all saw this in the B-roll, but this was the craziest one. This was the last time it wrote some code, and then it said, I've updated this, please test the button. Okay, I said it worked, now let's store the data, and says, I'll update this. I say, yes, to let's apply these changes. I'll now update this. Wait, you didn't do the previous changes. I'll update this. I say, okay, yes, code these changes in. I'll now apply these. Apply these changes. I'll now apply these changes. Okay, so we currently have this, and I want to do an actual prompt. It's like, I'll now apply these changes. Okay, please do. And then it wrote the code as a diff and didn't add them to the code base. So I said, add them to the code base. And then it says, I'll now apply these changes in a single edit. I don't... <laughs> That's O3 Mini. In Windsurf, I don't know how it is in Cursor, but that is a horrendous user experience if I've ever seen one. And finally, we get to GPT-40, which is supposed to be one of the best coding AI models out there according to this benchmark with its new, I think, March 26th update. You know, the update that also came with the image generation update with all the Ghibli Studio, this and that. Yeah, they also updated its coding ability. And what it feels like um, is that it's trying to be Claude 3.5 but it's just not as good, as accurate, as precise, with more hallucinations. And something it really likes to do for whatever reason is overwrite a lot of code with the same exact code. The only thing it's better at than 3.5 is that it's faster, but if something's gonna be faster and way more wrong, then I'd rather the other one take longer. You really need heavy code review, or in other words, don't use 4.0 with coding. Use it for chat. It's a wonderful chat companion when I just wanna bounce some ideas off of and things of that nature. It'll tell me like, bro, you're cooking now. That's that's low key um, fire, dude. Or I don't know what the lingo is nowadays, but that's how it tries to talk. It tries to be very personable, but that has nothing to do with coding. Now let's see which one is the best one-shotter of all. And unfortunately, Claude wants to charge money for 3.5 Sonnet, but yet I could use 3.7 Sonnet for free, so we're gonna skip 3.5 and go straight to 3.7, which in theory, in other tests that I've done previously, 3.7 is better at trying to one-shot things. But spoiler alert, it's not the best. Let's see how it does. So I'm entering this prompt. Make an addictive 
launch style game like Kitten Cannon. Use P5JS only, no HTML. Show instructions on screen. I like pixelated animals, funny physics, and random obstacles that send you flying or stop you cold. So after about a minute and 40 seconds, this is what we have. I'm going to open up the P5JS web editor, throw it in, and launch my... Yeah, so that wasn't really expected, but that should be an easy fix. So if I just say it works, as in there's no errors, but the screen isn't following the character once launched, I need to also be able to aim up and down to adjust trajectory. Well, that should fix everything, right? Well, it fixed those aspects, but now we have floating obstacles that are... I don't even know what to say. I'm sure we could have fixed it, but... Yeah, I'm sure I can fix it. The obstacles are floating up and down in odd ways. They should stay where they are. And if we try it again... Okay, that didn't fix it. <laughs> We're done. Wait, are we going backwards now? Let's move on to the next one. That being Gemini 2.5 Pro, which gave me an error, then I tried to fix it. The game worked, however, I got a collision error, which it was able to fix with another prompt, and then this is the game. Pretty dang good if you ask me. It wrote all of the code, just needed a couple of error fixes, which it did itself in true vibe coding fashion. Definitely better than 3.7. Chat GPT 4.0, oh, I forgot to hit record at the very beginning, but I did give it the same prompt. All of these are the same prompt, and it did in fact work on the very first try. It depends on what you consider working. My issue here is that there were too many things wrong. It, there was no charge, there's no aiming, the camera didn't work properly, it didn't launch it very far, the pixels are floating above the ground, but they're not moving like 3.7 at least. So in all honesty, I didn't give this as many shots as the others, but I don't think it deserved it. And I did get O3 Mini High to give it a shot. However, I forgot that it had memory of other chats, which I think is why it looks kind of similar to what 4.0 gave me. It does have an interesting launch system, but it's not a very powerful one. I actually need to try this again. Ooh, that sends it way further. I thought it was just bad, like a uh, low power, but it just depends on how far you drag this. In order, it looks like it doesn't have any obstacles past a certain point yeah interesting so it did not do anything like infinitely and red ones slow you down green ones speed you up that one's a, it's actually a very cool mechanic i ain't gonna lie however that means it didn't listen to the prompt i said random obstacles that send you flying or stop you cold so i guess the green it doesn't send you flying but it gives you a boost and the red doesn't stop you cold it only slows you down so while cool and unique it didn't particularly listen exactly to the prompt. So what that means is Gemini 2.5 Pro, even though it took three iterations, where it wrote most of the code at first, and then I had to fix two errors, produced the best game, most accurate to the prompt. O3 Mini comes in place number two, even though it didn't listen exactly to the prompt, it did one shot 200 lines of code, had some pretty cool mechanics, tried to have its own unique spin on the game, I suppose, and it, and it worked. Whereas then, I don't know, 3.7 and 4.0, I don't even think they deserve third and fourth place because those were kind of trash. And now for the Rust refactoring. So what all four AIs got right was change the VEC in is safe to a slice, which just avoids unnecessary cloning. And they all changed Windows to next to Windows to all, which is uh, just more efficient, more readable and idiomatic. It's better. And then Claude, GPT-40, and O3 Mini High used .expect instead of .unwrap, which is a better message, but it still panics. Whereas Gemini 2.5 Pro used result here, this operator, and match logic, so it logs bad lines and just keeps going. So they all work, but it seems like 2.5 Pro is just quite a bit better. And those same three cloned the full vector, remove I like this, which is just inefficient. Whereas Gemini builds a new vector while skipping one index using dot filter map or slicing, which is more efficient, less memory churn, yeah. And then what's interesting is Gemini and Claude both did report dot late less than two is true, which I mean, is just it's just logical, but the open AI models returned false, which is technically incorrect. And then Claude and O3 Mini both use dot map dot sum change, which is nice. It works perfectly fine limited error handling, and then 4.0 and Gemini used for loops for this specific thing, which is not as elegant, if you will, but does allow, you know, better error handling. And if you need more control, it allows for that too. But is it necessary in this instance? I'll let y'all be the judge. So what we have here is just um, 2.5 Pro appearing to be a lot better. 3.7 Sonnet would come in second place because it did some of the things that 2.5 Pro did that I felt were a little bit better. And then O3 Mini and 4.0 were very similar with O3 Mini edging it out just a little bit, but still not, mm, not 
Yeah. So anyway, that's what I got for you. There's no point in recapping because I talked about everything throughout the video. What was better for what and what I recommend for what. And this will vary based on, you know, if you use new frameworks or unpopular languages and things of that nature. And then the size of your code base. And, and there's a lot of variables here that will dictate which is better and which is worse. But what I did in this video was as broad as I could get. Hope it could help. Y'all have a good one.